All right, so this is the first uh, test uh, for me to record, I guess, vlog style content for my, I don't know, my YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> we will be reading uh, just a few paragraphs out of the book I'm reading right now, which is The 48 Laws of Power. And then I will try editing between this camera and this camera and seeing how all that works. So let's grab the book. So right now I am reading The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. It's a really good book. Um, I think that it comes with a lot of controversy um, or at the very least it's kind of like a, a loaded text and I do think that that's because a lot of people read it as a self-help book and I don't think that that's the right context for, for taking in the book. I like to say that it is a history book with a point. The point being that people have utilized power throughout the ages in various ways. And it's probably better for us to learn um, from what they've done to, how should I say, you know, what they've done to get ahead and manipulate others. It's not that you should <laughs> be always operating to manipulate people, but you should probably be aware of the rules if you're going to be playing the game of life. So yeah, let's dig in. I am um, just at, so I am at the law 25, recreate yourself. The judgment on this law is, do not accept the roles that society uh, foist on you. Recreate yourself by forging a new identity. Be uh, one that commands attention and never bores the audience. Be the master of your own image rather than letting others define it for you. Incorporate dramatic devices into your public gestures and actions. Your power will be enhanced and your character will seem larger than life. I already read the first part, uh, Observance of Law 1, which I believe was about Julius Caesar. So I'm just going to try to read the entirety of Observance of Law Number 2. Um, and the way that this book works is it uses history to teach these things through example. So each of these uh, sections is usually a story from history. He first provides the example from history and then he sort of outlines or delves into what is to be learned from the story. So let's uh, just start there. Um, so in the year 1831, a young woman named Aurore Dupin de Devant left her husband and family in the provinces and moved to Paris. She would be a writer marriage she felt was worse than prison for it left her neither the time nor the freedom to pursue her passion in paris she would establish her independence and make her living by writing soon after dudevant arrived in the capital however she had to confront a certain harsh reality to have any degree of freedom in paris you have to have money for women, money could only come through marriage or prostitution. No woman had ever come close to making a living by writing. In fact, when Dudevant first showed her writing to an editor, he told her, You should make babies, madame, not literature. Clearly, Dudevant had, to, had come to Paris to attempt the impossible. In the end, though, she came up with a strategy to do what no woman had ever done, a strategy to recreate herself completely, forging a public image of her own making. Women writers before her had been forced into a ready-made role, that of a second-rate artist who, who wrote mostly for the woman. Dudevant decided that if she had to play a role, she would turn the game around. She would play the part of a man. In 1832, a publisher accepted Dudevant's first major novel, Indiana. She had chosen to publish it under the pseudonym George Sand, and all of Paris assumed the impressive new writer was male. 
Dudevant had sometimes worn men's clothing before creating George Sand. She had always found men's shirts and riding breechers more comfortable. Now, as a public figure, she, exagger she exaggerated the image. She added long men's coats, gray hats, heavy boots, and dandyish cravats to her wardrobe. She smoked cigars and, in conversations, expressed herself like a man, unafraid to dominate the conversation or to use a saucy word. This strange male-female writer fascinated the public, and unlike other women writers, Sand found herself accepted into the clique of male artists. She drank and smoked. She drank? Man, okay. All right, so I'm not the best, <laughs> I'm not the best reader. Uh, at least out loud, um, but I can get better. I wonder if I, maybe if I did this, there we go. Okay. She drank and smoked with him, even carried on affairs with the most famous artist of Europe, Musette, Lisette, Champin. It was she who did the wooing and also the abandoning. She moved on at her discretion. Those who knew Sand well understood that her male persona protected her from the public's prying eyes. Out in the world, she enjoyed playing the part of, out in the world, she enjoyed par playing the part to the extreme. In private, she remained herself. She also realized that the character of George Sand could grow stale or predictable. And to avoid this, she would every now and then dramatically alter the character she had created. Instead of conducting her affairs with famous men, she would begin meddling in the politics, leading demonstrations, inspiring student rebellions. No one would dictate to her the limits of the character she had created. Long after she died and after most people had stopped reading her novels, the larger-than-life theatricality of the character has continued to fascinate and inspire. Interpretation Throughout Sand's public life, acquaintances and other artists had, who spent time in her company had the feeling they were in the presence of a man. But in her journals and to her close friends, such as Gustave Flumbert. So one thing about this book is you're going to run into a lot of names that you will not know how to pronounce. Maybe I shouldn't make that broad. I run into a lot of names that I do not know how to pronounce. But to continue, um, to her closest friends, such as Gustave Flaubert, she confessed she had no desire to be a man. She was playing the part for public consumption. What she really wanted was the power to determine her own character. She refused the limits her society would have set on her. She did not attain her power, however, by being herself. Instead, she created the persona that she could constantly adapt to her own desires, a persona that attracted attention and gave her presence. Understand this, the world wants to assign you a role in life, and once you accept that role, you are doomed. Your power is limited to the tiny amount allotted to the role you have selected or have been forced to assume. An actor, on the other hand, plays many roles. Enjoy that protection, enjoy that protein power. And if it is beyond you, at least forge a new identity. One of your making, one that has no boundaries assigned to it by an envious and resentful world. This act of defiance is Promethean. It makes you responsible for your own creation. Your new identity will protect you from the world precisely because it is not you. It is a costume you put on and take off. You need not take it personally. And your new identity sets you apart, gives you theatrical presence. Those in the back row can see and hear you. Those in the front row marvel at your audacity. And a quote, and the quote at the bottom of this section. Do not people talk in society of a man being a great actor? They do not mean by that that he feels, but that he excels in stimulating, through, though he feels nothing. Denis de Dorit, 1713 to 1784. One thing I love in this book is seeing 
all these great quotes from people and it's just smattered with all these amazing quotes and uh, just seeing their lifespan, kind of doing quick math to see how long they made it in this world. I think that would be 61 years, which, you know, first the 1700s, I mean, that's, that's a lifespan. Uh, should I go ahead and read Keys to Power? Uh, Keys to Power is like two and a half pages. So I think just for a test, this is probably more than enough. And we'll see if anybody even sees it. But um, I guess to, to conclude, I highly recommend this book. And I might even read more out of it to you um, if I continue on this. Uh, I would love this to be some sort of uh, reading series uh, sort of uh, channel. Or at the very least to make that a regular show on the channel. And I'll work on being a better reader. It's something I would like to do. But that's going to be it for today. So I'm just going to leave you with this. You must start somewhere. So why not here? Thank you. And bye.